Hello. In this video, we're going to be proving the chain rule and then doing some examples to help illustrate the more complicated versions of the chain rule. To begin with, we're going to take a look at the proof, and while this isn't technically a rigorous proof, it should still give you an idea of why the chain rule is true. So I'm going to call it a proof just in air quotes. There's a slight technical reason why this proof isn't completely accurate, uh, but it's good enough for our purposes. So to start the proof, we see that we have a composite function up here, capital F of x equals little f of x of g of x. So when we begin our proof, we have capital f of x plus h minus capital f of x, which would be equal to f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x. Now, we're going to need a bit of a trick in this proof. As in most proofs, there's some type of insight we need. And what we're going to do is multiply and divide by g of x plus h minus g of x. So we're going to divide by g of x plus h minus g of x. And we're going to multiply by the same thing. Now, from there, we can start to see what's going on. If we begin to make a limit, well, we're going to have two different pieces. We're going to have this piece, and we're going to have this piece, and they're going to be combined with multiplication. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find the actual derivative. So we'll get the derivative of capital Fx equals the limit, as h approaches 0, of this whole quantity here, f of x plus h minus f of x. So we have f of g of x plus h minus f of g of x over g of x plus h minus g of x times g of x plus h minus g of x and we need to put an h somewhere on the bottom, so we're just going to put an over h over here. The h is over top of this whole thing, and so we can throw it on the bottom of the second fraction. Now, if you notice, this kind of looks like the derivative of g of x. But this looks very messy. There's all sorts of things going on in this term, and we need to clean it up a little bit. In particular, if you look at the denominator, it almost appears as though the denominator is approaching, well, zero. Imagine plugging in h equals to 0, you're going to get g of x plus 0, or just g of x, minus g of x. So this denominator appears to be approaching 0, and potentially we can get a definition of the derivative from this fraction. But what we need is a substitution. So we need to let k equal g of x plus h minus g of x. So if we notice... As k, well, as h, I should say, as h approaches 0, k is going to also approach g of x minus g of x, which is also 0. So this denominator is approaching 0. Now, when we do this to k, when we call the denominator k, it also allows us to make another substitution up in the top. In particular, if k is equal to g of x plus h minus g of x, we could move the g of x to the other side and say that g of x plus h, so therefore, g of x plus h is equal to g of x plus k. So let's go ahead and take this substitution for k that we have here and plug it in for the denominator. And let's like this substitution we have here, g of x plus h, and let's plug it in to our function fx. So we're going to rewrite all that as follows. The derivative of capital fx equals the limit as h approaches 0, of f of g of x plus k 
minus f of g of x over k times g of x plus h minus g of x over h. Now, as we said, since h is approaching 0 in this limit, k is also approaching 0. And we know that the limit of a product is going to be the product of the limits. So we're going to split up this limit into two limits, one with k and one with h. So we'll get the limit as k approaches 0 of f of g of x plus k minus f of g of x over k times the limit as h approaches 0 of g of x plus h minus g of x over h. Well, we're finally able to recognize what we have in terms of derivatives. This second term over here is clearly g prime x. So we'll write that down. We have g prime x. Now this first term, well, it actually looks like a derivative. Normally the derivative has the letter h in it, but here we have the letter k, not a big deal. It looks like f of x plus h minus f of x over h, or f of x plus k minus f of x over k, but it's actually not x, it's, it's g of x. So what we have here is the derivative of f, but it's not just the derivative of f only, as if it was f of x. It's the derivative of f evaluated at g of x. Instead of having f of x, we have f of g of x, which, as it turns out, finishes the proof of the chain rule. So here we have some questions where we're going to continue to practice our chain rule. Now it's important with all of these questions, as I'm going through them, please feel free to pause the video at any time, try the questions ahead of time, try them on your own, and then go ahead and watch me do the solutions. Now let's look at the first one, the derivative of sine x squared. We have two functions, sine x and x squared. One function is inside of the other, so we have function composition which alerts us to the chain rule. We do the derivative of the outside function, which will become cos. The inside function x squared gets rewritten, sort of rides along, if you will. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, or 2x. Similar in the next example, the derivative of sine again is cos. And the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. If we're going to do the derivative of cos, we need to know that it's negative sine, we get x to the 4, times 4x cubed. The next one's a little trickier. It's hard to tell what's going on because there's a trig function, so we think maybe we do that derivative, but there's also this power 4 here. And what you need to realize is that the power of 4 is the most outside function. This almost looks like x to the power of 4. So when we do the derivative, we get 4 sine x plus 3 to the power of 3 times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of sine x is cos x, and the derivative of 3 is just 0 because it's a constant. So we get cos x. For the last two, we have e to the x as part of our question. The derivative of sine is going to be cos. Rewrite the e to the x. And then the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. For our last question, we have the derivative of e to the sine x. Well, the derivative of e to the x we know is always e to the x. So you write e, but instead of writing x in the power, you write sine x, because sine x is our g of x. It's our inside function. So it gets rewritten. Then we multiply by the derivative of sine x, which is cos x. So here are some real challenge problems I want you to take a look at. Again, please try the questions before I write down the solution. We have f of x equals e to the power of 4x squared. Well, f prime x will be the derivative of e, which is just e, and 4x squared gets rewritten, times the derivative of 4x squared is simply 8x. Now let's look at the next one. We have sine e 
to the power of x to the 5. Interesting, interesting. Well, the derivative, we'll start with the outside, will be simply cos. And then e to the x to the 5 gets rewritten. Times, now we have to look at the next function, which is e. Derivative of e is simply e. And the x to the 5 gets rewritten. Times, we've got one more function, x to the 5, which has derivative 5x to the 4. When I first learned chain rule, my calculus professor explained that it was like peeling an onion. You have a layer here of sine, then you have a layer of e, and then you have a layer of x to the 5. And so you're peeling back the layers one layer at a time as you approach the very inside part of the function. But it's also kind of funny because the chain rule is like peeling an onion, and you cry all the time when you're peeling an onion. So I think it's a little humorous. Let's take a look at the next example. We have f prime x equal to, well, the 7 is just a constant, so we can rewrite that. The derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant times cotan. And again, the x cubed goes along for the ride. Then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is 3x squared. All right, time for some combinations of rules. We could, of course, take two functions and multiply them together. We could do a little bit of product rule, and that's exactly what we have here. We notice that we have tan of 3x, which is definitely going to require a chain rule. We have sine of 2x squared plus 1, which will require a chain rule, and both functions are multiplied together. So let's give this one a whirl. f prime x will be equal to secant squared 3x times the derivative of 3x, which is 3. And then the second function gets left alone. Plus the derivative of tan, or sorry, the derivative of uh, sine we're going to do. So tan gets rewritten as it is. And we multiply by the derivative of sine, which is cos, 2x squared plus 1 times 4x. You don't have to put the second one in brackets, but it's nice to always put the terms in square brackets. It just helps organize your work. Now let's look at fx equals sine x to the power of 51. Well here, the most outside function is x to the 51, a power rule. So we bring down that power. 51 sine x to the 50 times cos x. And we're done. Let's go ahead and find the derivative of this function. Before we do, notice that there's a 7.2. This is the very outside. We have a power rule. So we're going to need to bring down that 7.2, rewrite the inside function, and then multiply by whatever the derivative of this is. So let's start it off. f prime x equals 7.2 x to the 4 plus sine x squared to the power of 6.2 times. Well, now we have to deal with this inside function. And in fact, we have addition. So we can go 4x cubed plus derivative of sine is cos x squared. But now we need another chain rule times 2x. It looks like we finished doing derivatives, so we'll close off that bracket, and there's our answer. Let's take a look at this function. Cotan of x squared plus cotan squared of x squared. Hmm. They almost seem the same, but there's this extra 2 on this second cotan. I wonder what's going to happen. Let's find the derivative. Well, cotan becomes negative cosecant squared times 2x. Everything's seeming normal initially. But now, what do we do with this cotan squared? My advice to you would be to rewrite this cotan squared as cotan of x squared, all squared. When you see a little power of 2 on a trig function, what it means is there's literally two of those trig functions multiplied together. 
And so writing as a power this way is very effective to see that the power rule has to happen first before we do the derivative of the trig function. So here we're going to get plus 2 cotan x squared to the power of 1 times negative cosecant squared x squared times 2x. Now, it's not necessary to write this power 1 here. Uh, you don't have to because it's just to the power of 1, but it's a good habit to get into to make sure that you're remembering to do that power rule first before we do the derivative of the trig function. Now, here we have, of course, our good friend, the quotient rule. Just to remind you, we sing the song, low d high, less high d low, over the denominator squared we go. So let's get into it. So we're going to start with low cos 6x minus cotan x d high secant squared 2x plus secant 5x tan 5x don't forget that times 5 less so this is low d high less high tan 2x plus secant 5x d low derivative of cos is minus sine 6x times 6 and then derivative of cotan is negative cosecant squared so we'll make that a positive cosecant squared all over the denominator squared we go so this whole thing is over cos 6x minus cotan x all squared definitely a messy question but as long as we sing the song we should be able to get the correct answer. Now on to the hardest question of the notes for the day. We have to find the derivative of this crazy function. There's definitely a lot here. There's an x squared, there's a sine cubed, there's a cos, and there's also this power of 7 over 2. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is look at the very outside function. What's the thing on the very outside? What's the first derivative we have to do? And the answer is we have to use the power rule to bring down this 7 over 2. So that's going to be the very first step, 7 over 2, bracket. Everything else just gets rewritten. x squared, sine cubed, 5x, minus 3, cos, pi x squared, all gets rewritten. Multiply, put some big brackets and start the chain rule. Well, we have inside the brackets two functions separated by subtraction. So we can do the derivative of this one, we can put a minus, and then the derivative of this one. But we're going to run into some problems with this one because if you notice, there's multiplication. We have, you guessed it, a product rule. So you're going to get 2x times sine cubed 5x plus x squared Oh no, inside of our product rule, we now have to do another chain rule. It's almost as if we were peeling our onion, and inside of it we found more onions that had to be peeled. This sine cubed is a chain rule question. We have to bring down that 3, which is a power. Again, if it helps you, you can write this sine cubed over here as sine of 5x all to the power of 3. We have definitely, definitely a chain rule to do. And so we're going to bring down that 3 and get 3 sine of 5x to the power of 2 times cos of 5x times our last 5. Now we have to subtract off the other Term. Well, it's going to be cos, and we know the derivative of cos is minus sine, so we could put a plus here. Plus 3 sine pi x squared. And we need another chain rule here. Multiply by pi times 2x. 
We then go ahead and close off the final bracket, and we're all done. Now, just a few notes here. If you had written this as 2 pi x, that would be fine. Or if you had decided not to rewrite the sign, there's another notation for this section here. If you had written this as, instead, sine squared 5x, that would also be fine. It would mean the same thing and you would get full marks for either notation. But make sure that you realize when you're doing this trig function here that the power rule has to happen first. Last but not least, there's some homework to practice. Take a look at number 7 to 53 on page 204. Make sure you omit these ones. The questions are really just a little bit strange. But definitely try these questions. I'd recommend doing the odd and even questions. You want to get a lot of practice with the chain rule. Thanks for watching.